So we can just ignore that. Okay. And you just have a conversation with me. Okay. To start off, can you tell me your name, where you live, and what you do? Uh, my name is Bob Costello. Uh, I live in uh, Vandalia, Ohio, and I'm a retired school teacher. Where you live most of your life in Ohio? I'm originally from Pennsylvania, and I went to the University of Dayton at age 18, and I stayed there ever since. Taught for 32 and a half years. In what uh, grade? Uh, middle school, and I uh, coach at the high school, coach baseball. Um, any particular subjects? Uh, I taught uh, uh, seventh grade science and uh, physical education. What made you come down here today? Uh, I was in town visiting a friend, and uh, I would, anytime I go anywhere, I ask what I should see because I don't want to miss anything. I'm a good tourist. And they said I had to come here, and of course, uh, I had to come here from uh, you know, what I had seen, heard, and so forth. What did, you, what did you think of Kennedy when he was president? I loved him, and uh, my mother loved him, and uh, my mother had good... Uh, uh, decision-making skills, okay, and uh, I may jump ahead, but uh, today the thing that I wondered is what it would have been if he didn't die, and I probably other people say that to you, you know, what the country, the world would have been like. Uh, well, what do you think it would be like? Uh, not what it's like right now, okay. I, I think that uh, uh, there, were, there, would be, there would be more harmony and peace if he would have stayed alive uh, throughout the world, you know. And uh, we still wouldn't be uh, bickering and fighting over uh, race uh, right now. I, th I think that he would have, uh, you know, settled a lot, a lot of that stuff uh, if he stayed alive. Other battles as well, or uh, primarily the, just just in that general area. Uh, you know, he he he, he was willing to take a chance on on, on things. You know, uh, sometimes he didn't make the right decision, but he was willing to take a chance. Uh, but I, I, I kind of like the man. Uh, can you tell me what you remember on that? Oh, actually? I can tell you what I remember. Uh, and uh, I was on a trampoline at the University of Dayton uh, in, in their field house. Their field house was right, be, uh, right behind the student union. And I'm jumping on the trampoline, and there's a clock up there, and somebody comes in the door, and they holler down that the president was shot. And I mean, just everybody just stopped. And then we, you know, got off and went up into the union, and then we heard what had happened. And I, at the time, was uh, living in a fraternity house with about 11 guys, and uh, most of these guys were pre-med, and uh, most of us were Italian, and we were very sensitive people, and so we took it kind of hard. And I can remember that night, we didn't know what to do, so we all went and saw a John Wayne movie. And now, whether it was disrespectful or whatever, it kind of... Uh, took our mind off of everything because we really went through a lot. Well, you know, not being part of his family, but we went through a lot that day. Uh, you know, as the country went through a lot. How did the rest of the weekend play out for you? Uh, it was just, it was just sad, and and and, and it was kind of, you know, uh, you you pictured a, a a damp, rainy, dreary type of day, you know. And, and then when the Oswald thing happened, uh, you know, he got shot. I mean, that just, uh, you know, just threw more things. In my memory of that, I can remember him getting shot and everything. What I felt and so forth, uh, you know, I don't know. And uh, throughout the years, uh, I, I wasn't a, a uh, oh, you know, I didn't go into depth about what happened, but I followed and read and, and some stuff about all the different theories and so forth. And I have a younger brother who's an attorney in uh, Pennsylvania, in Pittsburgh, and he knew Cheryl, Cheryl Wick, Wick, Cheryl Wick. The, uh, and he was a, a coroner, he's still a coroner in uh, Allegheny County, but he, he did a lot of uh, uh, theory about what happened that day, uh, you, know, uh, you know, five, 10, 15 years after uh, Kennedy was shot. I don't know which direction you want to go. Who uh, was that, Cheryl? Pardon? Cheryl Wick. Uh, uh, Cheryl. It was a man. Uh, Cheryl. Cheryl Wick. I'm sorry. And uh, he's still the uh, a coroner. He's a, he, he was a coroner and a, an attorney. Okay. So, but now he's a coroner. He, he, he's been on a lot of television shows. Uh, you know, when 
when somebody uh, for an autopsy on something and gives his opinion. You know, just like with the, the Simpson thing, you know, they had all these people giving their opinions. He, he's one of those. What kind of conclusions did he come to? Uh, he didn't agree with uh, a lot of the conclusions that were, uh, uh, you know, passed down from uh, the commission. And, uh, and I think that uh, things weren't right. You know, I, I, I think that there, there was another shot and I think there were more people involved in this, but it was a pretty, pretty good kept secret if there were other people involved in it. So yeah. what would be your suspicion as who was involved? I, th I think Ruby was involved in it somehow, okay? I think that's why uh, he, uh, he killed Oswald. Okay, to shut him up. Now, uh, you know, was it, and I always kind of lean towards Cuba, you know, it, it coming out of Cuba. And then, and then my Italian side leans towards, well, maybe the mafia did it. Okay, so uh, I, I, I vacillate back and forth on those two things. But that's, uh, you know, that's uh, about, uh, I, I tell you what, I, I don't, I just about, I went up to the window up there and I just about cried, you know, I mean, it was kind of, kind of, you know, spooky, sad flashbacks and, you know, and all that different kind of stuff. But I, I, I still think there was a, another shooter uh, involved and, and other people involved. But. Um, so do you think the Warren Commission was in good faith or no? I think they meant, they meant well, but I, I think that things were just, uh, you know, sometimes things are hushed up for uh, the betterment of something else. I don't know if that makes sense to you, but I, I just think there was more to what went on, and I, and I think uh, uh, a lot of secrets went, uh, you know, the graves of a lot of people with the things that happened that day. But, you know, uh, I mean, Oswald had a great, uh, he must have had, the route, I mean, you know, the car comes around the corner, slows down, and I mean, being up in that corner up there and looking down there, you know, uh, you know, when, when, when you first, if you've never been in the building, you think, wow, that was a tough shot to make. But being in that window and looking out that window today, that wasn't a very tough shot to make, you know. And, uh, so what was your overall impression of the museum besides the window, your overall impression? I, 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 I think the people that put this together, I, I, they did a nice job with it. The, uh, they didn't have too much of this or not enough of this. I think it was, uh, and it was kind of neat to see some uh, uh, people my age with maybe grandchildren or people a little younger than me explaining to their kids. Because when I used to teach, you know, you talk about Kennedy, these kids didn't, some of these kids didn't know who you were talking about. You know, you forget that, you know, they, they were born in, in 76 or 80 or or 90 or whatever okay and and this was you know uh, in the 60s and sometimes but it's nice to see parents you know sharing it with their kids and, and, and these kids uh, that I was watching up there were quite interested you know a lot of kids don't want to hear what mom and dad have to say and you know they drag me along on a vacation and but no they it was kind of neat to see that and just just to see the whole thing uh, we, we came down on the, uh, I don't know what they call their train or whatever, and uh, uh, we went the train tracks and we just, you know, I just looked out and saw a little bit of the, and boy, I, I knew where I was. And then I, and then I had flashback that I saw something where they thought one of the shooters left by the train tracks. So it was in the box car or, or in that area there. And that went through my mind. So a lot of strange things go through uh, your mind. Did you go up to the yeah, oh, well, I'm originally from Pittsburgh, and Andy Warhol is, is a Pittsburgh person, so I kind of enjoyed, enjoyed that, you know, and, uh, you know, his work. So you were a fan of Warhol? Uh, I like different things, you know, I like different things. I, I like that, you know, he had a lot of imagination. Of course, the one, you, the, the one I think about the, uh, from him is, is the, the can of soup, you know, that, I don't know why, I don't know. But that, I think that was, a friend of mine was here before, and I don't think that was here, so he said that was a nice addition. Yeah. What did you think of that flash book that you see under the glass? It was the book that Warhol did about the assassination. Remember that? They had the book all laid out. Yes, 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 yes. I, 
to be truthful with you, I, I, I looked at it and, uh, you know, went down the line and, uh, uh, you know, didn't pay that much attention to it. I was looking at some of the other stuff, but I did see it, but it didn't, to me, it didn't, uh, it didn't do anything, you know. It, it, it was, uh, I don't like scientific things, so it was kind of scientific, you know, and he had to do this and do that. Have you, did you uh, see this plaque out here on the wall? Uh, not yet. There was a long line coming here, so we, we, we came in from down below. No, I haven't so been there. Actually to go down no, we haven't been outside yet, no. Uh, so you're going to find an X marking? I, well, I heard about that, and, and when we came in from over here, I, I saw it, and I tried to see. Well, of course, the trees are out now a little bit more than they were, but I saw it from over there when, when we came in. And, uh, you know, that was. What I mean. I mean, you close your eyes and you can see what, what was happening. You can see, you know, Mrs. Kennedy, you know, turn around and, and then the, the car, you know, the, the other thing that I'd never paid much attention to is when the car went under the bridge, people were waving. They just thought it was still part of the motorcade and, you know, and they were just waving and, and uh, you know. Another thing I thought, you know, uh, when I go someplace, I, I, I look around a lot. and. Looking out that window, the people down on this corner down here, you know, just standing around waiting and so forth. I mean, you would think somebody would have looked up and, and you know, and maybe saw a flash, but, you know, they were following the car, I know. But, uh, you, you know, it was, all this stuff is a lot closer than I thought it was, okay? So, uh, but I guess when you're caught up in something, you just don't notice those, those little things that the hindsight brings in. So to change your perception a little bit of the area and actually see it. Yes, yes it did. Yes it did. I mean, uh, you know, it, like I said before, I, 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 thought, I, thought, I thought Oswald was a heck of a marksman from, you know, watching him on television and all these pictures and stuff. But like after being up, uh, you know, on the sixth floor, you know, I could have pulled the shot off, you know, with a little bit of practice, you know. And Do you have experience shooting? I used to shoot when I was, was, was young, you know, and uh, then I went to college and, you know, you, for, you don't do those things anymore. You don't have time. You know, I used to be a hunter and all that stuff and just don't have time. Are you going to go over and take a look at the Kennedy Memorial? I think we are. I think that's part of, uh, you know, what we're supposed to see today. What about the conspiracy museum? I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, we're in town, and maybe this will be of interest to you, that the soccer coach at SMU, uh, we used to be his football coach, so he invited us down for, for the week, and he's taken us around in different places, so it's kind of nice, you know, to, you know, to be with somebody in the town, you know, that knows all this stuff, you know, where to go and what to see. Did you get the, the conspiracy people out here trying to sell you their papers? Yes, yes I, I, well, they didn't try to sell us anything. But I, I, I've been around enough that I kind of figured out, out what was, you know, what was going on, you know. But uh, this will, you know, this, this is like Jimmy Hoffa. This, this is never going to be, you know, the, the, you know, the other day they, they said they had a new lead. They're never going to find out the truth about that, and they're not, not going to find out the truth, of, you know, about this. And, uh, and as long as we have imaginations, there will be all kind of theories and all kind of ideas and, you know. All those things. So you think people will continue to come down here? Oh, years from now? oh, people come down here 100 years from now. I read a, I, uh, I don't know if this has to do what we're talking about, but I, I, I got a book, and I, and, and I'll tell you what, I can't tell you the exact name of it, but, and, and I've just read part of it. it it's, it's about the children of presidents. Okay, the guy that got the idea was, uh, had something to do with uh, the former George Bush, okay? And he started writing this book. And George wasn't president yet, young George. And he found out, I don't know the exact number, but uh, somewhere around 12 of the sons of presidents didn't make it past 30. And when he was writing the book, it was before uh, Junior got shot. Okay, and he never put two and two together, you know, that, well, you know, I'm writing this book and this president's son died at 30 and, you know, and, and here we have a, a son 30 years old, you know. And I always thought that, uh, that this guy would, 
would bring us all us old timers back to Camelot again. You know, his his son, because I, I just thought he had a, a lot going for him. You know. So is the Kennedy family still? Oh, I think they're great. I, you know, I, I think they're great. I, if I hear something bad about them, I don't I don't I don't want to hear them, hear about it. And and of course, uh, uh, I, I I like the Special Olympics. And uh, Maria Shriver, I, you know, I, I, I've seen her on Oprah enough that, you know, she's a good person, and uh, you know, and they, they, she talks to her mother every day. You know, I like that kind of stuff. You know, we we need more of that. So, do you have a political affiliation yourself, or are you just happen to be a fan of the candidate? I'm a Republican, but if the man, if the person's the right person, then that's who I vote for. Do you always consider yourself a Republican? Yes. I considered myself a Republican when I was 18 years old and had a chance to get a county job in Pennsylvania, and I had to be registered as a Republican to get the job. <laughs> okay, and now have things changed? I don't know. <laughs> Do you have any idea who uh, George Fetterman Neely is? I just saw the statue over there, and, you, and I heard the you know the plaza is named after him, and that's 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 about it. I you know, I now never wondered who you know who it was named after or anything like that. Just curious, is there any uh, anything else that I neglected to ask? No, no, I think I talked too much. I, I've got to meet my friends, and uh, and I hope I helped you out, and uh, sure we did. Uh, I hope this. Uh, I mean, I'm okay. Oh, okay. So, you know. I ramble sometimes, so. Oh, no, he said some good stuff.